Minimalism has always been an interesting topic of discussion, and uh, it's usually because it's f***ing terrible. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Art Talk. Uh, In this episode, in our inaugural episode, I'm going to be talking about why minimalism is killing creativity. I've answered the question for you straight away, but uh, let's, let's look into it. Let's find out why and what you can do about it. So there are many definitions of minimalism and I'm going to get into like the cultural differences between Western and Eastern, but I'm going to go with the standard Cambridge Dictionary definition, which is a style in art, design and theatre that uses the smallest range of materials and colours possible and only very simple shapes or forms. I feel like we've all seen people do like logo redesigns or logo designs where it's just very minimalistic and honestly quite trashy. The first person I can think of is Zimri Mayfield. Part of the reason I'm calling him out specifically is that he literally rips out the soul from people's brands. People will design brilliant, brilliant logos that have detail and depth and he'll just rip that all away and make it very corporate and minimalistic. In the 90s, corporations wanted everything to be edgy. Now corporations want everything to be clean and minimalistic and it's just, it's soulless and it's boring. A good example of something that's happened recently in regards to a logo redesign, there's there's many, but I'm gonna talk about an Australian one. So Arnott's Biscuits. If you know Tim Tams, all the good stuff that comes from Arnott's, they have redesigned their wonderful little parrot into this monstrosity. And no, it's not for the Arnott's biscuits, it's for their corporation. Again, clean, soulless. You picking up a theme here with like capitalism and all this? Yeah. Instagram art is garbage. A lot of people have talked about it. If you post your art on Instagram, it doesn't mean your art is garbage. It just means Instagram art is garbage. It encourages soulless copying. There are so many easily adaptable styles so that people who don't have an art style but desperately want one will see something and copy it. Whether that be like faceless, detailless silhouette portraiture or one line drawings, they're so easy to copy and make your own. I think the saddest part about Instagram art is that because we view likes and comments as validation currency, it's it's genuinely killing genuine creativity. Creative intentions are dying and so is the art that comes as a result of that. How would I use Instagram if I was still using Instagram? Well, I would be creating work that would be sharing my experiences, my thoughts, my feelings, adapting from other people, but not just straight out copying styles or content in general. I'm not saying that seeing an artist or an artwork you like and trying to make it your own is theft or bad art. I'm saying that people are doing it in a really bad, minimalistic, simplistic, and just trashy way. I mean, taking someone's work and making it your own is data and fluxes all over and I live for that shit. But the desperation for internet validation is crushing souls and pushing creative people off the internet for fear of never being loved or worse, understood. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into Eastern versus Western minimalism. I feel like everybody knows Western minimalism from the minimalists. They're so minimalist, they don't even use color photographs of themselves most of the time. One of them even gave away his cat because he was trying to be super minimalistic. Instead of changing his lifestyle to keep his animal, his friend, he gave it away because he just didn't want to change. That that should tell you enough. He encourages people to give away valuable sentimental objects like photos of their family with like handwriting on the back is like just scan them not the same thing. The thing about western minimalism it's very individual focused and it's very sterile. Take a look at western interiors that are minimalist. They genuinely look like mental hospitals. How do I know that? I've been in a couple and uh bad vibes bad vibes. It lacks soul. Are you you seeing a theme here? It lacks soul. It's devoid of character, devoid of depth. 
And of course, these guys say money doesn't buy happiness because they're millionaires. People will say things like, Steve Jobs was really productive because he wore the same outfit every day and woke up at 5 a.m. Steve Jobs was incredibly productive because he was a billionaire that paid other people to do all of his errands and chores, so he had the time and freedom to do whatever he wanted. Eastern minimalism, on the other hand, mwah, Marie Kondo, that kind of energy. Zen Buddhism, Shintoism, the concept of living in the moment and appreciating the world around you and keeping things simple, not sterile. The West has constantly bastardized minimalism. They've stolen it from the East because it is Eastern philosophy and they've transformed it into some weird creature of white walls and uh, crappy Ikea furniture. If you take a look at like apartments or homes that are designed in Western minimalist style, they look like prison cells for thought crimes. The West is 100% guilty of overconsumption, but taking less is more to the extreme is just depraved. And here's a, here's a real fun fact. The intense hatred of bright colors stems from deep-seated racism. I know, wild concept, but, but hear me out. I'm sure all of you know Goethe. In 1810, he wrote a book called The Theory of Color, which has a lot of wonderful information. But here is something you might not have known that he said. And uh, hold on to your horses. He said that savage nations, uneducated people and children typically prefer bright colors, whereas people of refinement avoid color in their dress and try to banish color from the objects about them. Cultures like those in Southeast Asia and the Middle East have constantly been devalued because of their brightly colored clothing. Same as in South America. These people use beautiful bright colors and patterns to celebrate their individuality, to celebrate their cultures and their beautiful way of life. It's one of the ultimate freedoms of expression and a celebration of creativity. And yet the West automatically saw that and thought, you're childish, you're trashy. And it's really the opposite, huh? Even the concept of joy is judged as being childish and frivolous. Tell someone that you watch cartoons and they'll look at you like you've just admitted to being an Ottoman invader. Texture and lushness is something to celebrate, not repress. And as an autistic person, I completely understand that minimalism is a reaction to overstimulation in our lives, but tearing away the brightness in our spaces and in our lives is not the way to be doing it. Think of a famous artist or your favorite artist. Now, imagine them being a minimalist. My bet is that you can't. Is just splashing wild color like this bright red everywhere the solution and making maximalist artwork and whatever? No, there's so much shitty art that's very colorful. They look like a Lisa Frank sleep paralysis demon. So what can you do? Make whatever the hell you want, genuinely. Not what you think other people want to see from you, but what you would want to see out there. Gandhi may have been a pedophile, but be the change you want to see in the world is still solid advice. And as always, keep making stuff and stay bright. I'll see you in my next video.